All right, this is the Math 102 um, review, final exam review, starting with number 25. And so in these problems, we're going to be doing rational equations, so we have to be able to set up these equations. The first one is going to be a proportion. So we want to remember how to set up a proportion. We are comparing two things. So we want the sample number of bulbs over the defective. So when we set up this relationship, we will have 75 in the sample and four were defective. And now we wanna know if we have 450 bulbs in the sample, how many would we find to be defective? And so we're gonna cross multiply and we're gonna take four times 450 and then divide it by 75. And that's gonna tell us that there is expected to be 24 defective bulbs out of 450, okay? Now for number 26, we have this missing number and um, it's going to be adding 15 times its reciprocal. And so remember, the reciprocal of a general number is 1 over x. So we have one number plus 15 times the reciprocal, and that's equal to 8. So that's how we're going to set it up. I'm going to come down here, and now we have our rational equation where I have a denominator that I need to clear. So I am going to multiply everything by x, and so that gives me x squared. These x's cancel out, plus 15 equals 8x. And since it's a quadratic, I want to set it equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract 8x from both sides, and then I'm going to factor it so factors of positive 15 that make negative 8 are going to be negative 3 and negative 5. And then I set each one of these equal to 0. And that's going to tell me that my solution is either going to be positive 3 or x is going to be positive 5. Okay? Now, when we get to number 27 and number 28 and number 29, these are all going to be work problems. So I'm going to erase this here so that we can come up with our table for number uh, 27. And so for 27, whoops, sorry. Yeah, let's undo that. Anyway, I just did there. Okay, for some number 27, we have one pump drains a pool in eight minutes. When a second pump is used with the first pump, then it only takes six minutes to drain. And so we wanna know how long would the second pump drain the pool if it was the only pump. So we're gonna have the first pump. And then the second pump. And then we have together. And so it says that the first pump drains it in eight minutes. The second pump is what we don't know. And together, it only takes them six minutes. So now we have to convert them to unit fractions by putting them underneath one. And then we can set up our equation. So the first pump plus the second pump has to equal the together. Time. And so now we're going to um, get rid of that denominator. And so we want the, the smallest number that 8 and 6 go into, and that would be 24. And then we also have to have the x represented. So we're going to multiply everything by 24x. And so that goes in and leaves 3. So that becomes 3x. The x's cancel and that leaves me 24, and then six goes into 24, whoops, and gives me four. So that equals four x. So then I would subtract the three x from both sides, and so that tells me that the second pump 
would take 24 minutes by itself. So that was number 27. Now the same idea is gonna be for number 28 where we have the work problem where we're painting, they've got the painter, they've got the assistant, and they wanna know how long it's gonna to take together. So again, this is, seems to be a nice spot to work these problems out. So I'm gonna set up painter. And then we've got assistant. And then we've got together. So the first painter paints the house in seven hours. Her assistant takes nine hours and we wanna know how long it would take them together. So we are going to have them turned into unit fractions. And so we are going to have one seventh plus one ninth is equal to one over X. And our common denominator is going to be 63 X. And so seven goes into 63 and leaves nine. So we get nine X. Nine goes into 63 and leaves seven. So we get seven X. And then the X's cancel out and we get 63. So the nine plus seven is 16 X equals 63 divide by 16, and so x, and we wanna turn it into a mixed number. Um, so I think, maybe they just leave it as 63. Oh no, they do turn it into a mixed number. So um, if I divided 16 into 63, that would go three times, that gives me 48, and that leaves me with 15. So it would be three hours, and 15 sixteenths of an hour. So that finishes number 28. Now, when we get to number 29, they have one little added bonus here. And this added bonus is talking about how much it's going to cost. So first we have to figure out what their time together on the job would be, and then we have to multiply that time by $40 an hour. So let's do Mark and Rachel, and then together. So we have Mark can plant um, in four hours, Rachel can plant in five hours, and we want to know what it will take them together. So we put one-fourth, one-fifth, one over x. So one-fourth plus one-fifth is equal to one over X. And then your common denominator is going to be 20 X. Everything has to be accounted for. And so four goes into 20 and leaves five. So we get five X. Five goes into 20 and leaves four. So we get four X and X is cancel and we get 20. So now we have, um, 5x and 4x makes 9x equals 20, and then we divide by 9. And so the, the amount of time, I'm going to come up here, the amount of time it takes is 20 ninths hours, okay? But um, it is $40 per hour. So I am just going to multiply that by the cost of... 40 um, over 1. And so when I take 20 times 40, I get 800. And when I divide that by 9, it's going to come out to be 88.888888, etc. And so we have to round that to the nearest penny, which means that we need two decimal places after the decimal point. And so we would round it to $88.89. All right. So the last one I'm going to do, um, well, actually, let's do these last two because they fall into the same um, 
category of solving application problems. So we have a distance problem and we have on level terrain and then we have on mountainous terrain. Okay, so I'm going to create my chart and I'm just going to say level mountain distance equals rate times time. And remember that the rate is usually where the variable falls into um, play. So the distance, it travels 400 miles on level terrain, but it only travels 160 miles on mountainous terrain. Now it says the rate of the car is 30 miles less in the mountains than on level. So that means that level is going to be my x and the mountains is mountains is going to be x minus 30s. And so once I get my distance and my rate, my time is always going to be my distance divided by my rate. And so I get this. Now, because it says it takes in the same amount of time, then we're going to set those two equal to each other. So we're going to take 400 over x is equal to 160 over x minus 30, and now we have a proportion that we can cross multiply. So I'm going to take 400 times x minus 30, and then 160 times x. So distributing, I get 400x minus 12,000 equals 160. I am going to subtract 400x which then gives me negative 12,000 is equal to negative 240x. And then I will divide by negative 240. And so that says that x comes out to be 50 miles per hour, but that's on level terrain, okay? So right here, oops, that's on level terrain, which was my x. Ugh, sorry. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. And so to get my um, mountain, it's going to be 50 minus 30 which says that they were going 20 miles per hour in the mountains. Okay, and then the last one we're going to do is find the similar triangles where I always do this, where I write big triangle over small triangle, and I just match up the sides. So I'm going to write my proportion 22 over 18, go back to the big triangle, x, over 36. And then I'm just going to cross multiply where I take 22 times 36 and divide it by 18. And so when I do that, 22 times 36 and divide it by 18, I will get x is 44. So that finishes up through 31 and then we will start our systems of equations.